And welcome in to a Tuesday edition of the Backstage Pass, always powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com and presented by our good friends over at Bangtail Whiskey. If you hadn't checked them out, uh, you might want to do that. Bangtail.com and, of course, the Easy Liquor app is out there uh, for your convenience to shop on. And you know what's funny? I love online shopping. I, I told everybody about this today, and I speak on it on social media. It's become the, the norm now. It's, I had a package in my door arrive. When I got home, and, and if you're Christmas shopping, I always say Amazon is, is the way to go out there if you're not uh, going to a store. It's nice, convenient, and Bangtail can do that for you, too. If you're looking to give somebody that particular bottle of Bangtail whiskey, you can do that for uh, the holidays come up. I know they're on back order now, so you might want to get your order in here uh, real soon to do that for Brandon Bing and the guys over there at Bangtail Whiskey. And Nick Canizales back in the saddle, Brandon Morrill here, and of course, Nick, I'm hanging on to our... This six to one lead as the Astros try to advance to their fifth straight American League Championship Series against the White Sox right now. I believe it's almost the top of the eighth. So definitely, it uh, is. Yeah, it's the uh, top of the eighth right now. Top of the <laughs> we'll eighth. Keep people uh, close to the bat. <laughs> yeah, up so, to bat and uh, six hey, outs away now. They got the off to a hot start. Series. They got off to a hot start. That's what they needed. That is what they yeah. needed, and uh, they kind of shut them up here a little bit. <laughs> well, we got to shut up the White Sox in the first round, Boston in the second round now for the American League Championship Series, and of course, happy baseball. Uh, watching to everybody out there, too. We'll keep you posted here. If it is, happens to be a final score during one of the breaks, we'll pass it along to you. Please to welcome in. I always say this. We get to find new talent here on the show. It's it's amazing that uh, sometimes talent finds us. We're not able to go out there and find it. But I remember a little bird putting a bug in my ear a couple of years ago. You may remember a, an artist by the name of Jamie O'Neill, who's uh, known from that 90s country era. We get to bring in her half-sister and doggone it, Minnie Murphy's here on the program. Minnie, what's going on? What's up? <laughs> We're doing uh, really well. Just pleased to have you here. So, hey, let's let's start there. Tell that story because uh, musically was kind of in your DNA uh, growing up, mom, dad, and and just being around the family. Uh, I want to hear all about this, and of course the the, the story with Jamie is is pretty phenomenal. Yeah. So uh, Jamie's my half sister, and we share the same dad, and that was my dad's first marriage in Australia. Um, he comes from New Zealand and he moved to Australia and met his first wife there and had Jamie and Samantha and they were like the Partridge family of Australia with like matching bell bottom outfits and they toured all around and everything and, and then uh, he met my mom and years later and had me and my brother and my sister Melissa and so but yeah they made my dad's always made his living playing music and um, my mom played keys in the band and they just played around the local bars and taverns of Bellingham, Washington, where I grew up. And uh, and then Jamie would come to visit and and uh, we'd have Christmas parties and lots of singing and songwriting and uh, it's been awesome. So. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Well, many, I mean, who were you listening to when you were growing up and, and uh, kind of in your, your early years and teenage years? Who was that you were you rocking to on the, uh, on the radio? I mean, I've listened to so many different styles. My mom was a classical pianist, and so I would try to pretend like I was a ballerina and dance around <laughs> her playing Chopin and stuff, and I was just like, wow, I got to learn how to do that. And um, so she gave us piano lessons when we were all like 10 years old. And, and it just stuck with me. Like I, I became addicted to the piano and um, every morning had to go straight to the piano and play. And, uh, and then my dad played like classic rock and, and uh, country rock. And so we'd go to his gigs and he would call me up on stage and I'd do like some Pam Tillis or Shania Twain or Little Mermaid when I was really young, like first getting up on stage, it was like Little Mermaid songs. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean, I loved, uh, you know, a lot of pop music too and soul and R&B. And my mom was kind of the bluesy jazz influence, turning mm -hmm. me on to like Nina Simone and Ray Charles and kind of like the Motown stuff. and. And then my dad was the Celtic country. He he yodeled, and so I I'd always try to copy him and and uh, figure out how to do that. And he always said, "Don't try that. Don't try this at home." Whatever he <laughs> yodel for people, but um, 
because it could be kind of yeah hit or miss thing if we don't know how to do it <laughs> but anyway yeah so like but I also grew up, you know, in the Pacific Northwest, Seattle area. So I love like grunge and alternative rock. Too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Nirvana. And, um, hey, I was jamming to some Nirvana earlier on Sirius XM. That was, that was <laughs> on the radio rocking. Yeah. I mean, I listen to everything. I love, um, you know, like Portuguese, like Brazilian jazz and just like, world music i just did a spanish version of, of my single and um i don't know i just kind of try to soak it all in i love hip-hop and uh mm -hmm. but yeah i think there's a there's definitely some country roots coming from my dad and um i just try to fuse it all into <laughs> my songwriting and stuff so that's awesome yeah. Yeah, speaking of that too, let's let's go back. I used that pun at the top of the show when I said "doggone it" because that was a single uh, you put out in 2015, and I loved that song. And when Jamie had, had told me about you just a couple of years later, I'd already said, "Yeah, I've got a little taste of the music." There's that classical kind of traditional feel to it, um, and then she puts her own style with it when it comes to uh, her own vocals. Because no, the good thing about it, I love about your music, many is nobody sounds like you. You sound like Minnie Murphy and you've got just some powerful vocals out there. You just immensely really uh, tacked onto a lot of things. You can do so much with your vocal range. I love that. Uh, tell me about, I guess the, from doggone it uh, to the current signal now get over it, which is out there across all the platforms. Uh, what changed, if anything, was it still kind of the, the same style? Was there a certain sound you were looking for with kind of the Minnie Murphy sound, good songs coming to you? Take me through uh, that pattern and how, I guess, musically you've changed over the last six years. I'm always like I I have all these different sides of myself and there's a lot of side projects that were never finished and in all types of genres like I got like a punk rock thing and then uh, country's always been there you know but mm -hmm. I've, I've liked I've always wanted to explore and express different sides of myself and push myself and and um uh, so I think like I always had a soft spot for the traditional country sound and the publishing company that I write for has like a back catalog of like that type of country. And um, I just always kind of had that idea of like doing a classic country album. And um, but mainly I've just been writing and trying to get songs cut with up with other artists and um, I think like we put out dogs on it and um but we didn't really have like a big push or you know i wasn't mm -hmm. signed but we we did luck out with getting like the serious station playing it nationally and stuff but um that was kind of another thing that we had more songs that we never released and so i just kind of pitched them and there was a girl on american idol that recorded one but she never put it out. I don't know. I just kind of went into like songwriting mode, and, and but I think having a son, I had a I have a little baby boy, and he's like 18 months old now. <laughs> he's growing mm -hmm. up super fast, but that's sort of what motivated me to um, put music out again. Oddly enough, everybody always says like, when you have kids, you gotta, you know kiss your dreams goodbye and it's all about them but for me it was the opposite because I feel like I want to set that example of never giving up and and so this the single that I have out now was wasn't something that I was planning on putting out but um I just kind of fell in love with the vibe and and uh I just told myself you know I'm not gonna you know, give up. I want to teach him that, you know, it's never too late. And no matter how many times things don't work out, you just got to keep, keep going after it and, and mm -hmm. follow through. And because there's been deals that haven't worked out, music that I haven't released and bands that fell apart. And, and um, I just kind of told myself, I'm not going to do that this time, you know? And mm -hmm. I think like, that's sort of, it also was the uh, 
being in quarantine kind of, you know, helped me go within and kind of tap into that part of myself that really wanted to make something happen again, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the combination of things. And uh, I think that familiar sound, that, that old school country was just sort of the place I was in, you know, with becoming a mom and, and uh, getting back to my roots kind of thing. <laughs> there you so, go. Uh-huh. Yeah. I love that too. Right. Nick, you're ready. I'm ready to hear some sound. Yeah, you ready to hear some music? Let's say, yeah, I want to say uh, real quick, you know, hello to our viewers that are uh, yeah. that are watching right now. Henry and Don and David from uh, out there in England. So we appreciate all of you guys. And Henry's out there in Tampa. He's kind of sad about the Rays. Uh, but, yeah, let's go ahead and listen to the music. I, that's, this is the best part of the show right here. Yeah. So Minnie's going to grace us with a uh, – the newest single, and of course, uh, I'm going to ask her about this one. Can't change a man was uh, I kept playing that one over and over for my my daughter. She's now 18 months as well, and I feel so musically inclined for her too because she liked everything uh, that we put on a playlist for you, and she kept moving her shoulders as she does to uh, to music and dancing and like a big old smile on her face. So, uh, many I guess of the selection of songs. What's what's up first? What are you going to play for us? Um, well, I guess I could start off with my single okay all right <laughs> all right i'm gonna play it on the piano so it's a different kind of vibe on the piano oh i love the piano one day I, that's my goal on my bucket list to play the piano i've been fascinated for many years uh i actually need to just try to go and get some lessons done but i've always been fascinated with the piano yeah. <laughs> she's back there she is back and, and David, I'll get to your question here a little bit. Some great questions coming in for many. So uh, all the way from England is uh, David Hine. We'll get to his question here in a little bit. And, uh, yeah, there's actually uh, – he says, do you play any instruments? Well, one is the piano. So we'll talk to her more about that. Uh, here's Minnie Murphy on the Backstage Pass presented by Bangtail Whiskey. Uh, Minnie, take it away. Shoot me. 
The back tail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-hosts Kirsty Krause, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30 powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass. And we're doing that here. Minnie Murphy here on the Backstage Pass, presented by Bangtail Whiskey, Brandon Morrell, Nick Canizales. And tomorrow we got a good one for you. Be sure to tune in for this one. A guy that's making some noise in Texas country. And now Nashville is a Nashville recording artist, Texas country artist. Uh, Creed Fisher is going to join us here on the Backstage Pass in a couple of weeks. Uh, the great Steve Warner is going to drop by as we talk a little holiday music. It's getting into that time of year where artists are doing holiday albums and pleased to uh, have many in there. I'm sure she'd love to do a, a, a Christmas song. And with those type of vocals, uh, she could sing the phone book A to Z and pick any uh, uh, Christmas song that she wanted to. That's the latest single. Uh, get over it out there across all the digital platforms. Uh, hey, tell me about this one, how this came together, because such a, a beautiful song. And like I said, it has a, a little feel of the, the 90s flavor we talked about at the beginning of the show. Um, but your vocals, I mean, my God, are superior the recorded version is just as good as you playing it on piano. How did how did this one uh, uh, come together? And did you write this one? Thanks. Yeah, um, it's a co-write with uh, Trapped and Harvey and Don Bedell. And uh, my publisher, Johnny Morris, will sometimes ask us to, he'll do like assignment rights. Like, can you write this song title or can you write a song for so-and-so? And, and so it was a title that uh, Don Bedell had. And... Um, Don is his uh, business partner, and so he was like, y'all need to write this title, get over it, and so we got together with Trafton, and uh, most of the time when I write with Trafton, we usually end up, if we ever get stumped, we'll, we'll kind of revert back to writing a drinking song. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's kind of what happened with this one. We were tossing around different ideas but um, I just felt like it needed to be about whiskey and heartbreak and uh, kind of, you know, I think when you, when you go there, then it, I don't know, for me, it makes me want to do that kind of old school country sound, you know? Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, that recording, when I, when I got with uh, John Conley, I told him, you know, like if you could do some kind of cool intro riff that, you know, make it sound kind of honky tonk, you know, but mm -hmm. like old school and, uh, he just nailed it. And, uh, you know, it's got that vibe of just sitting at a dive bar and kind of yeah. <laughs> drinking about it. And, you know, <laughs> that is true, <laughs> but it's also kind of, it's mid tempo and it's got some charm, you know, it's not like too slow. It mm -hmm. probably feels a little more sad on the, on the, on the piano, but <laughs> break down, but, but I like the vibe of the recording because it kind of, um, you know, it's got all that steel guitar and, mm -hmm. uh, um, 
it, it still kind of has a groove to it that that isn't too heavy mm -hmm. you know <laughs> even though it's like kind of a sad song you know about drowning yourself in the whiskey we all know <laughs> how that goes it doesn't sound we do <laughs> I mean, no doubt about that Many, I want to ask you, you know, have you had any any time to just kind of reflect on your career and, and where you actually started, you know, performing those uh, those weekly, uh, you know, gigs at uh, you know, maybe some restaurants or at bar areas and to, you know, and then, you know, fast forward to where you are now. Uh, just to, just a journey that uh, that you've taken. Yeah, I mean, I think um, you learn that, you know, whether there's success or failure, you, you can't really, you have to let both of those things sort of roll off your back. You know, I mean, you could have a deal one day and, and then lose it the next day. And, but that can't let you, that can't stop you from, from working on your craft, you know? And I think that songwriting and playing music is, is such a healing thing and uh just to write about what you're going through and and then to be able to play it for people and it's such an amazing thing that you know i i would do it no matter where i'm at and you know i still do all kinds of different gigs you know like demos and and weddings and things and you know big stuff little stuff you know it's it's always like a a privilege to play you know mm -hmm. no matter what it is but um yeah i think uh definitely paid some dues <laughs> like <laughs> you know playing for free or playing for tips or you mm -hmm. know i remember one time i had to lug my keyboard up it was like a spiral staircase at this mexican restaurant and, and it was like they had a little balcony that was probably like i mean it was very narrow and i was like <laughs> I had to take my pa like up this like it was so awkward and i was like but you know, it's a gig. <laughs> it's a gig. That's, that's <laughs> true. Know, I mean, I always, I kind of like. Um, my goal was just to be able to make a living doing music, mm -hmm. and I think there's so many different ways you can do that. You know, you can. I've played keys for people. I played keys for uh, Vince Gill's daughter Jenny Gill, and mm -hmm. or I've sung backup for people, and you know, and then done a lot of dance band stuff, and then. Mm -hmm. been in different types of you know bands and uh you know solo stuff and but um i think uh it's always nice to have big things happen but you know you always you always gotta keep it moving you know <laughs> yeah that's true I, you do I, I love the fact that you got to, we talked about the musical DNA at the top and, and traveling and that kind of thing, but I want to build on this a little bit. Um, talk about, I guess, on the voyage to Nashville with your dad, Jimmy, and uh, getting a chance to write songs or record a handful of songs with some of the industry's top names. I mean, it's, you're 16 and you're going to follow your dream. And I, I love this kind of, kind of build on that for me because a lot of experience uh, comes out of that too with your dad and, uh, just the, the songwriting, I'm sure it started somewhere and now it's, you know, elevated itself to a different level now that you're older, but to, to be around that and to kind of soak all it in like a sponge at such a young age. And then now you've turned into, you know, a, a veteran at this thing and you're still following your dream. That experience at a young age builds on itself and, and I guess puts you, you know, where you're at now in your career. Talk about that from, I guess the, the journey that was. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was really exciting to come to Nashville and I started writing songs probably when I was 13 or so. And, um, and then I, I, my mom and I really bonded with our songwriting at that time and sitting down at the piano together and writing and, and then writing with my dad and then seeing Jamie's career take off and then, mm -hmm. but yeah, just watching my parents play and, and, uh, for people I think helped. And, uh, once I felt like I had a collection of five good songs, um, my dad called some friends for some investment money and, and, uh, he, he said, we're going to, 
do this like it's a record, you know, we're going to pay the top dollar, you know, full scale. Because you can get demos done, you know, pretty cheaply. And But we were trying to get a record deal. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, you know, real. it was a big labor of love and, and just paying attention to every little detail. And it was amazing going in the studio and with these world-class players, you know, I mean, it, these people that live in Nashville come from all over the world and they're, they're just incredible. And so it was like Paul Lyme who played for Shania Twain and, and, uh, JT Cornfloss and, uh, uh, Jonathan Yudkin, trying to remember everybody, um, just amazing players. And, uh, it sounded so good that I couldn't even speak at the moment. <laughs> I was in the vocal booth. I was like supposed to lay down my scratch vocal and mm -hmm. and they kicked off one of my songs and I was like, Holy crap, this sounds so good and I was just like <laughs> and they they the recording engineer was like, Are you there? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you're supposed to be singing and I was like, Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> okay, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, but like I just was, I mean, it felt like I was holding like diamonds, you know, when, when we got that thing done and, and like I'd carry around my little CD and at my dad's gigs when I would go to sing and, you know, or the coffee shop that I'd play at and have a box of them to sell and stuff. And I just felt like, you know, <laughs> this is my <laughs> treasure, you know, and, um, I kind of miss that feeling, you know, because I mean, you do go through things and you get jaded and, you know, that deal didn't even work out. You know, Sony merged with RCA and we never got to release that music. But um, I think, you know, at the end of the day, you're left with what you leave behind, you know, and, and the things you've, your catalog, the things you've recorded and you've written. And um, that's kind of the gift in and of itself, you know, is to, is to have that, you know, and, um, mm -hmm. and we still talk about putting that out there, you know, it's, it still holds up that, that recording. And, um, my dad was able to pitch it to Sony and, uh, the A&R guy flew out to Bellingham and I sang for him and, and then flew to, to Nashville and, uh, sang for Alan Butler and, and, got the deal, but it still took mm -hmm. like a couple years before I moved to Nashville. But I was kind of, you know, I was very naive and I didn't even pick up my high school diploma, even though I graduated, I was just like, I'm, I'm going to Nashville, <laughs> I'm not going to college. You know, I, I know what I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I was like off and running and thinking about music videos and tours and, you know, I, fall asleep with hearing, you know, symphonies in my head, thinking about the future and in a way that can be good to have that expectancy and, and, and positive attitude. But, you know, at the same time, you have to be realistic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so after that deal, you know, I went straight to waiting tables and, and, you know, just trying to hold on and, um, and then, you know, work my way back up, you know, mm -hmm. going to play at the piano bar at Maggiano's or Sambuca. And, and then another deal came and then another deal went, and, you know, and, but, uh, I think, um, the one constant is just how great it feels to be on stage and, mm -hmm. uh, to sing and, you know, it's always an exhilarating feeling of the butterflies and um, just trying to give it your all and, and reach for something higher than yourself to work through you and, and connect mm -hmm. with people. And so, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I try to stay in the now moment because you never know <laughs> what could happen. It, it, it mm -hmm. is kind of like a, a risky business, you know. 
Um, it is, but I you're very it. good at it. You're, you're very good at it. And you're taking exactly. those risks and you're taking that walk on the wild side. You believe in yourself. You believe in your sound. And and definitely it's it's something I'm going to, I've got a stage question here in a little bit, but Nick, uh, let's do some more music. What do you say? I'm ready to do some music. What do you have on the agenda right now? Well, I was going to play a, there we go. <laughs> my guitar. Yes. <laughs> I'm not as good on guitar as piano, but um, anyway, <laughs> this right, is kind of a jazzy song. I, I, I put out like an acoustic album called Something Cafe, and I wrote this with a uh, jazz artist in New York. His name is Justin Thompson, and we were talking about having a hard time saying no, and I mm -hmm. said I have a, I have a no problem, and it's like, ooh, let's write that. So, <laughs> all right, here we go. What we came up with. I've got a no problem with you. You're the only one I can refuse. All the other guys are easy to pass by, but boy, I can't deny the truth. I've got a no problem with you in everything I say or do. Whatever you suggest, my answer's always yes. I've got a no problem with you. A woman should be strong, and I thought I was till you came alone. And I fell in love all oh, because I've got a no problem with you. And I can only offer this excuse. The depth of my affection won't let me make objections. Got a no problem with you. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. That sounds good to me. Good glad. It's a good bangtail whiskey. If you hadn't gotten yours, check them out on the Easy Liquor app or at bangtail.com for some nice and about as smooth as many's voice is right there when you pick this up it goes right down the throat uh you can do anything like i said the phone book the jazz everything there and i mean excellent don't, don't be so hard on yourself the guitar skills are as good as the piano the piano the guitar oh man it goes back and forth <laughs> it has been great hey many i want to ask you a question i know that you, you know you are knee deep in music but i want to know about Minnie murphy what do you do outside of music what are some of your hobbies that you like to do um Lately, I've kind of been doing a whole, like, 
cleaning out of my house and I, I just stumbled on these feng shui videos that I'm super inspired by because I have a lot of clutter <laughs> and uh, you know, it, it's crazy. Like when you start going through everything and um, you can find some things that you forgot about and, and uh, you know, also just uh, the, I'm just interested in the flow of energy and, and your space and how much that can uh, change your life. And so that's kind of my, my thing of the moment is, trying to, you know, declutter and um, open up the windows every day and just let the air in and mm -hmm. uh, bring in some plants. And um, I guess since my son's getting into everything, it's kind of <laughs> the like, Same gotta get all the hazards out of the way and yeah. <laughs> organize. And um, so uh, it's really fascinating to me because I guess they, they break down different areas of your house, like, mm -hmm. you know, your, your love and your marriage corner and your wealth corner. And, um, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. I mean, I think you don't want to get too superstitious about it, but, um, I think there's something to it. I, I really feel like there's, uh, something, something there that, uh, trying to tap into <laughs> <laughs> and I, I know about the tearing up the house because uh, she's with the same age you're both our kids here your your son my daughter and it's uh yeah child proof time haven't gotten to every little nook and cranny but at least keeping doors closed and things locked and I, a funny story here I many i'll tell you this the other night she walks in my room which i i, I pick her up and, and pull her out little did i know i had to lock myself out of my bedroom so i had to go get the uh, butter knife and the pick the lock pick <laughs> thing so that was kind of funny that that's that, hilarious that, yeah just just funny that they do stuff like that and you're so nervous about them getting into things in your room that you grab a doorknob and just don't think anything about twisting it and then you that's just true. close it so it, it's happened uh right. to the finest out there right i know it's like he's not a baby anymore so no they're, I'm going through stuff. I'm like, oh, there's a gun. okay we gotta move the gun <laughs> like, yeah we gotta, we gotta yeah, put it up on the top shelf yeah, and like, there's uh uh you know, radiator fluid and just stuff. Yeah. Like, oh God, you know, the, the nails and the, the, we just got to, so I'm constantly kind of stressed. Yeah. A <laughs> trying to like get things together, but he's, um, he's really instinctual and like, mm -hmm. uh, it's almost like he's telling me what I need to work on. He'll point out. <laughs> What's his name? Phoenix. Phoenix. Oh, oh nice. Name. Wow. Our daughter's that's Chloe, but I do love that Phoenix name. That, that's oh, awesome. Yeah. Chloe too. That's, that's beautiful. Yeah, she's uh I, I, they say a friend of mine told me today they said um the terrible twos are coming, but now at 18 months it started hey, early. Listen. So yeah. My kid's you... 13, and I'm telling you, those terrible twos is something else. I don't know if it's a two-year-old or a 13-year-old. So uh, <laughs> you know, they get more expensive. They have yeah. a little more expensive taste. That's, yeah. that's what I've heard too. Um, let me ask you this as we continue the, the rapid fire. I got a stage question because this has never happened for me before. So a stage question, was there more fear stepping on stage with the Tonight Show with Jay Leno or the Grand Ole Opry? What was more kind of exciting and I guess a little bit nerve wracking at the same time? Um, they were both very nerve wracking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Grand Ole Opry was really, I mean, walking out on that stage, the lights were so bright, but it was so exciting. And like, mm -hmm. I don't know, there's just an energy there that's like, I mean, it was just really, really exciting. And um, the Jay Leno thing, uh, you know, of course, I, I just didn't want to mess up for Jamie, you know, singing back up. <laughs> so I'm like trying to warm up and make sure I know my part and everything and sing out. And, um, but then you also have to smile and do the dance moves and, you know. <laughs> and, uh, so mm -hmm. uh, I'd say I think the Grand Ole Opry was kind of more exhilarating because uh, the, the Jerry Little thing is filmed early in the day mm -hmm. so it's, it's it's kind of staged it's not as much of a live um thing 
Okay. I mean, it's an audience, but it, it still was sort of, you know, there's a production team like, okay, and now we're going to do that, you know, and so. But, but the <laughs> what great little, experiences. Like, you know. Yeah, great experiences, no doubt. Great experiences. Yep. Uh, Mitty, uh, what are you binge watching right now? Are you binge watching anything? Um, well, I've been pulling up. Uh, I'm just trying to keep myself in a peaceful state because I've been so stressed lately. <laughs> so mainly my binging is like pulling up uh, nature scenery on YouTube or like, uh, you know, just the sound of rain and like peaceful and Native American flutes and, mm -hmm. and just like a thunderstorm and just having that going in the background <laughs> or like some, <laughs> some pictures of some mountains or, or, uh, you know, some, some beautiful scenery and, and classical music is kind of what I've been doing lately. <laughs> there you go. Close your eyes and visualize. <laughs> I'm gonna ask. It's like kids shows, like oh yeah, Abba Gabba or uh, <laughs> yeah. Curious George. <laughs> Mine is the she loves the the Bluey show now. But I got to ask you this about uh, before I let you go here, and we certainly certainly appreciate the time today. What's the Minnie Murphy favorite food? Is there a, a food you like to cook, or is there one you like uh, to get takeout? I guess or both. That's a good question. Um, well, <laughs> I love um, I love Indian food, and uh, I just love like exotic foods, like uh, Vietnamese pho, like the you know the vegetable soup with the no noodles and the egg, and and uh, or like. Um, my favorite thing to cook would probably be like salmon and because that's what my mom made in the Northwest. It was like, I called it yummy rice and it was just like white rice with garlic and Parmesan and butter and, and then like a good salad and salmon. And whenever my mom made that, I was like, yeah, it's a salmon night. <laughs> but, uh, so I, I, that's probably my favorite thing to make. And, um, but I've been kind of, I haven't really been on the best health kick lately. I've been having a sweet tooth pretty bad in the morning. So I went to Starbucks today and I feel like I always need like sugar in the morning. <laughs> a good sweet latte and like a chocolate croissant or something. <laughs> Not very healthy. But. Uh, it's, it's food. You got to stay awake and you got to have the caffeine, no doubt. And, uh, you got to eat. I always say it may not be the most healthy uh, assortment of foods out there, but at some point uh, you got to either, uh, like I said, eat something to kind of keep the, keep the wheels spinning too. Well, I'll tell you what's uh, yeah. spinning out there is the latest single get over it across all the uh, digital platforms. And uh, you know, I, I tell you what, there's another one out there. Her, her previous single can't change a man. If you haven't heard that one, Oh my God, you're going to be wrapped up in that song and, and caught up like an old nineties country feel to that one too, as well. So definitely looking forward to uh you know, playing that one next time. Many, we appreciate the time here on the show and looking forward yes. to uh, catching up again at some point down the line. Continued success going forward. And I know you guys are excited. I believe an LP is coming out here called Evergreen. Is that correct, too? Yes, that'll be coming out uh, early next year. Okay. <laughs> we we're hoping to get it out this year, but, you know, things always <laughs> take longer than you think they will. But definitely, like, prob I think we're coming out in February with uh, it's seven songs and, uh, a lot of it is that kind of classic country style and um, mm -hmm. sort of themes of family and uh, uh, nature. And um, my son is singing on, well, not singing. Well, it, I feel like it's singing, but his, he's doing his little theremin high squeaky. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I got him in the studio right after he said mama for the first time and got that on tape. And Oh, I love it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I got him. He's, he's on the bonus track. The last <laughs> so we'll look for that in early part of uh, 22 and hey, just continue success going forward it's it's been a great story and a great uh, chance to catch up with you here and an honor for us here on the uh, backstage pass to catch it with you a musical talent and we should cherish it out there with uh, the playing and the vocals and definitely Thank many you hope too. you had a great time and looking forward let's do it again what do you say i'd love to yeah and I'd, <laughs> I'd love to do a christmas thing that you were talking about that would be really cool i I'm writing some Christmas songs and yes, getting a couple of this uh, Netflix movie coming up next year. 
So I'm excited about that. <laughs> well, get your that calls. That's great. Right now, we cannot wait. I'm ready for a Christmas album. She could. I mean, again, you yes. listen to a lot of her music out there, including the jazz and and of course uh, just anything out there. Minnie's put out there across all the platforms. Go support our artists and and Minnie again. We appreciate the time and looking forward to catching up again down the road. And and just glad you had fun and thanks for sharing. Uh, some of those great stories with us. And tell Jamie we said hello from the Backstage Pass. I will. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Go give her a like on uh, social media. And uh, Minnie Murphy. coming out with a Christmas album, actually. Uh, we we got to, yeah, and I've got to reach out to, to definitely the, the right people and, and get Jamie back on as these, these Christmas albums uh, continue to come in. Uh, speaking of Christmas albums, Steve Warner is going to drop by here in a couple of weeks. Uh, Creed Fisher tomorrow. And then, of course, our good friend uh, Jacob Bryant doing some big things October 28th. Looking forward to catching up with Jacob and uh, finding out what's going on in his world. I believe there's a little project with Luke Combs. I've heard some rumors about that, so it'll be interesting to ask him about that. And then some uh, thanks to Bangtail Whiskey for Nick. Uh, I'm Brandon, the entire cast. We'll see you guys tomorrow for a couple of shows. Tomorrow, Creed Fisher uh, will join us at 4.30 here on the Backstage Pass. Until then, have a great night. And uh, I should say this too, Nick, go Astros, because I believe we're three outs away from the American Three. League Championship Two Series. Away. Two outs away to play Boston on Friday, game one at Minute Maid Park. Wish I could be there, but I'll be definitely rooting the boys on as uh, we look forward to that, too. And then, uh, like I said, a great, great selection of shows the rest of this week and next week. Go follow Minnie. Get the music out there across your digital platforms. We'll talk to you guys very soon on the uh, Backstage Pass tomorrow. Until then, have a great week and especially a great night. We'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you.